Right, well, welcome back to Beacon Light, and this time we're going to do a really rapid-fire tour of what I was doing last June, aka Pride Art. Um, and I'm doing this to sort of dig into two things, and that is the philosophical and political underpinnings of art, and also how I create mood via colour and style choices. Two kind of different things, but also they're the same thing. Because doing the, this art, it, it did involve taking stances, and those pe and it means that these pieces are absolutely inextricably embedded in their context. Most art is. Art is political. And having a clear grasp of the philosophy behind your work, it is a really useful thing. It helps you make deliberate choices that do support the thematic consistency of your art. So... I only actually worked up the courage to go to Pride last year. I've been out for like a decade, but it did, did take a really long time. Um, and I walked out of there wearing body paint um, and it didn't come off for a while. And that was actually scary to be walking around outside of that context with that on. I was afraid. Obviously, I reapplied it. I'm like this as a human. But anyway, so this year then, obviously coronavirus but britain went really all in on the rainbows for the nhs nonsense um and a lot of people involved in that they were well intentioned they did have they did mean perfectly well but a lot were homophobic or transphobic or tory the these were people who hate the idea of either poor healthcare workers or queer people or both since that is a significant overlap having rights and then a bunch of um, during Pride Month, during June and July, a bunch of things that had been queer, um, historically, had kind of got taken over, um, and used for the rainbows for the NHS thing. And there is a really peculiar kind of rage that you get when you see that, when you, when you sit in there going, I was scared to be showing a rainbow this time last year, but now you're just saying, oh, this is ours now. Mm, don't like it. So I did this this really aggressively queer art as defiance. Um, I've also chosen the variant flag that explicitly recognises the important place for um, queer and trans people of colour in the community, um, which you can see via the black and brown stripes. Um, and the other thing I'm taking a stance of is the deeply tedious discourse that apparently rolls around every year now of does sexuality have a place at Pride? Uh, I think you can tell my answer just from the art. Um, the thing is, in a healthy society, sex wouldn't be something that's locked away from everything else. Um, unfortunately, we do have a deeply dysfunctional society around sex, but uh, that's not on queer people. <laughs> There's so few spaces to express queer sexuality. And, like, the shit we're talking is shit like bare skin on people who aren't heteronormatively pretty. It's leather gear, it's kissing, it's makeout. And all of that is completely normalised when it's cis and hetero people doing it. Um, so it's important for queer adults to be able to express their sexualities. And honestly, it's important for kids to see. Because if you grow up seeing cishet adults getting to express sexuality everywhere and but queer sexuality is hidden away it's shameful it's kept away from you um it's really easy to grow up with a complex which for um queer and trans kids that that becomes shame very easily and for cishet kids that becomes bigotry neither of which is a good outcome meanwhile of course in terms of who gets to come to Pride and what gets to be at Pride, cops and conservatives get to come. They're actively malevolent. But, so, you know, the point here is I wanted to draw my characters having fun on their terms. The ones that like to be sexy get to be. The ones that don't still look great. And Kwai's brought their daughter and the two of them are having a good time. Best of all, they're happy. Even Peregrine. I, I promise, Peregrine is happy here. Um, queer happiness is a threat to the status quo. Um, it, it's powerful, and these lot, they aren't real people, but their happiness makes me happy, and I'm a real people. Uh, so this was about 5 of 11 or 12 that I did, and it was the only thing that was really bringing me joy in June. And the other thing is, most of them had shit times in the games that they come from. Um, Breakovic and Peregrine had full-blown 
tragic arcs. Gehiri and Kwai got wrecked. Mache probably had a rough time there from the mid 17th century Holy Roman Empire. Um, so those were my sort of philosophical underpinnings um, in terms of this series. And it was quite important for me to know that, to recognize that, because it helped me to make my artistic choices, to, to make my design and conceptual choices, and to have that come across. Because um, what we've done here is we've covered the what of the drawing. I've talked about this a bit previously in, in the videos on concept. Um, the what here is I'm drawing X character having fun at Pride. So that's a very, very different mood to the gothic work that I've been showing you here. Um, it's the things that are necessary in this are bright colours, their sunshine, their expressions of happiness. So let's dig into the files. We'll start with Peregrine. And Peregrine was the second one I did after Factor, who you did see briefly popping up, and the one who solidified the style. Because uh, this one, it had me cackling when I got the concept of it. Um, like, Peregrine just with their grumpy fucking face, having very clearly been slutting it the hell up. Um, but a base, this art is really simple. Uh, it doesn't look it. All these multiply layers are basically just for the body paint and the lipstick. Uh, <laughs> But mostly it's just some line art. Where's the line art? Here it is. Um, base, basic flat colours, and then we've got a multiply layer in um, mostly blue. If you remember what I was saying for Foudros, um, we've got mostly blue here, but I've had to warm it up slightly on the, on the bare skin um, because of Peregrine's particular skin tone. Um, and then we've also got the glow dodge layer above, um, above the line art here, that just gives it that bit of that bit of a sunny, sunny thing, as well as this other one to shine up shiny bits. Um, and then I've also got a texture on it to again add that subtle bit of visual interest, as I've said before about textures. And then I went to town on you know the body paint, the kiss marks. The most complex work on this was at the design stage. So if you compare Peregrine's canon look um, with the, the corset, the cream primrose shirts, the boots, the scarf, and all of these carry over into this AU, um, although the scarf is becoming a choker, Peregrine is queer, it's the modern day, they hide their neck for reasons it was necessary. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed drawing this so much that I moved on to to, to do the next one. Uh, so let's pivot to Kehuri. And Kehuri desperately needs a good day. Um, but again, I've made design choices based off their canon design. Um, so note the black, um, the gold, the cream. Um, and we also have implications that um, Kehuri is happily and kinkily married to their partner Thorn, because this is an AU about queer joy, so nobody dies. Rip Thorn. Uh, <laughs> but let's hit some technical details as well. Um, so joy was important, and I've really worked quite hard on getting this this happy face going. Uh, so we, you know, you can see we were talking about smiles in my last video. Um, you can see that I've got a lot better at it now. Um, Kehuri's laugh lines are in place, um, even though their jaw is distended because of the tusks, uh, we can definitely see that they're smiling, and their ears are up, because that, this is the joy of variant humanoids. Um, everything's very saturated, um, even though the design itself is quite monochrome with the, um, the black and the cream, the colours are very saturated, and we can see I've got this strong gold. If I turn off the line art layer, you'll be able to see it a bit better. Um, and I've used the same series of colours on the um, flat colour layer to create the gold for the fittings and for the eyes, um, which then the glow dodge layer really enhances, you can see here. Um, let's turn the line art layer back on. I don't like looking at it without the line art. And, but we can really see what this, this glow dodge layer is doing. So I'll pull it all the way up and turn it back to normal. Um, it's literally just a scribble with the airbrush pen. But it, it does get this lovely, hazy, summery feeling in. 
I love Glow Dodge. It's amazing. Seriously, it's my favorite layer blend mode. Um, but let's let's move on because everything's got to be very rapid fire. I'm trying not to do take too long over this. So we'll move on to Kwai and Consentia, and Kwai's here with their daughter. Um, I've picked the pose very carefully. They are open. They are sharing this world. Um, to return to the politics, Kwai is trans and queer, and they are a good parent, and those things go together. And both they and their daughter do belong in this community. So again, we've got designs that are echoing canon um, with the color palette, and Kwai has the pendants that they canonically wear, as well as a shirt that echoes their class. They, they were a shield bearer. And we can see that even in this AU, Kwai has suffered bad. Uh, their scars are in place, but they get to be happy anyway, because this is my wish fulfillment AU, and I say so. Um, technical thing to note, I have used the the cool blue multiply still, um, and I've also used it on Consentia, which is a different choice to what I made with Peregrine. Um, but I've blended it in this instance on the soft planes of the skin to get the sense of the sunlight diffusing across the skin rather than ending as a flat line. Um, and combine that with the glow dodge, um, and it does create this lovely sort of um, rich, quite saturated sunlight effect, uh, which you can see most clearly, oops, wrong layer, um, you can see most clearly on Consentia's arm here. So that was this one, and I, I love doing this one. It's one of my favorite pictures of Kwai. They look really happy, uh, even though, you know, uh, poor Kwai. <laughs> the nose, it looks like that for a reason. Um, but we'll move on to Bregovic. Uh Bregovic was originally an Asimar Elementalist. They're not in the sun here. They are actually playing with fire instead. Um, but again, we're nodding to the echoes of the original concept, again, with the Elementalist thing, and with the color palette. I did use the CSP default fire tool, which is very nice, very fun. Um, where on earth is the fire? There it is the fire. I love that I use it so much. So it looks like that. And I've used that a lot with quite a lot of different layers to make it look like that, so apparently only two. Uh, <laughs> But I downloaded a specialist smoke tool. Um, do I have it here? Yes, I do. Um, can't see it very well, but it, it, it's there. There's no natural way to segue into this, but I will note that this whole series has this extra layer, uh, which is always invisible, but it's the layer where I've put all of the colors that I use so that I can make sure that they're unified, so that they all have quite a unified use of colour. They do look a bit different on this particular one, because that's a multiply layer, the tights are on a multiply layer, so they are gonna look different. And finally we come to what I think might be the last one I did, which is Maché. Um, and this is probably my favorite. It's it's very lively. There's a real sense of dynamic motion. This is somebody who's seen a camera and has gone, I'm going to be the hottest thing on this reel. And I think they've succeeded. Uh, so we're actually going to pull back to the sketch quickly for a moment here to talk about how I did this. So why has this come out as dynamic as it has? The key thing here is the line of action going up from the back foot to the head, um, which is directly above the back foot, which gives the impression of forward movement. Um, and then there is the expression, which I did take a wonderfully goofy um, reference image for. And then as we go up through the sketch layers, I've thickened their proportion somewhat, um, and I've, you know, done the clothing design. We've got in terms of how it works, it works because of the way I've had the folds on their shirt hang, because of the dramatic swoop of the cloak, because of the way I've conveyed what fabric the tights are made out of, as well as the um, what's underneath them. Uh, and then the colour really boosts it, boosts this asymmetrical arc across the canvas. 
Um, I've really gone for the high saturation colours throughout the series because I think the bright colours are really key to joy. And then I've boosted them with these Glow Dodge layers all the way through. Uh, the lowest saturation in the whole piece is the dusky blue, which I think is always the same dusky blue, um, which forms the shadows. Um, the reason for that is because this is all outdoors, and the skylight is... wrong layer. Uh, the skylight is bouncing down into the shadows to make them be blue. Shadow colour and warmth is a lot more complex than that, and I've very much simplified it, especially in the instance where I warmed it up to make Peregrine not look quite as dead as they actually are. But it's reasonable abstraction for the purposes of something like this. So there we have it, a whistle-stop tour of how I've constructed these aggressively queer, very defiant art pieces that made me genuinely happy when I desperately needed to be happy. And I hope you can find creative projects that do that for you. Um, we're all having a bit of a shit time. Art is good. I hope it is, I hope it is being a solace for you as it is for me. Fuck only knows what I'll be doing next June, but it was it was nice to revisit this this sun drenched mirage in the great days of December. So I'll see you next time. Um, don't know what I've got lined up for then, but I hope all your projects are going great and that you're also taking care of yourself in this very very strange winter and holiday season. Farewell. <laughs>